Welcome back to Panda Pen Club. Today we want to experiment with a groundbreaking idea. A second weekly review. Let's see how it goes. Let us know what you think. Today I want to talk about two pens which are virtually doppelgangers for each other, at least in terms of a superficial visual assessment. Like sisters, like twins. Here we have the Lambito 3059. Here we have the Twisby Eco. The same ink in each pen, Diamine Majestic Blue. I'm going to run you through the similarities and differences and my garbled opinions and let you know what we think. Let's start with the Twisby Eco. This pen is 22 grams capped. As you see it now, it is 13 grams uncapped. As you see it now, it's 139 millimeters in length capped and 131.1 millimeters in length uncapped. Twisby, of course, is made by Tarshin Precision, which is an OEM manufacturer that has now brilliantly branched out into doing own branded pens based in Taiwan. The retail price for this one is 29 British pounds. And what we have here is a limited edition Blossom version of the Twisby Eco. With Eco, of course, standing for economical, not ecological, as I sort of thought absently for some time but economical because this is certainly sold as a high caliber piston filler at an entry level price. Whether £29 is an entry level price for you will of course depend on, on all sorts of things. So this review presents quite an interesting comparison. The Lambito 3059 retails at £4. So although these pens are superficially similar, when we glance at them, they both have a different concept entirely of what constitutes entry level. The Blossom part of the Twisby Eco Blossom name, this edition that I have here, I guess alludes to the transparent plastic we have matched up on the knob and cap. We have perfectly transparent, clear plastic on the shaft of the pen. We have all this chrome on the clip and on the cap band. On the cap band, the words Eco Taiwan and Twisby written in nice big laser etched letters. The cap is hexagonal, which of course comes with built in roll stop properties that is reflected in the knob at the end of the lower finial, which you operate the piston filler system. You probably won't want to post this pen. It becomes a bit unwieldy as you can see, and the balance isn't quite right. Although it's clearly not prohibited to post it, it works nonetheless. I wouldn't necessarily imagine many people will be posting this pen. It closes in about 1.3 revolutions of the cap. The overall look of the pen is like something presented to Dr. Beverly Crusher in Star Trek. That's odd. And she would use it to perform one of those miraculously straightforward operations. Don't worry about it. some blipping, blinking little piece of 24th century technology. That's what this pen looks like to me. There's a sort of chunkiness to the design. It feels very chuckable. I could probably fling this into a backpack and I would not be too concerned about it getting knocked around a bit. It has a chunky, substantial feel to it, particularly the cap. It feels very robust. The section is like a tiny little little hazelnut that you're gripping onto and you have a little ledge at the end here to stop your fingers from falling onto the nib. It's a slightly slippery section I find and slightly on the small side. It's got a light structure to it. You can, there's some contouring. I think the structure is mainly decorative. This isn't one of those prescriptive sections that require you to hold the pen in a certain way, a triangle grip. If you do like that kind of grip, however, there is a model called the Eco T, which comes with a much more structured grip. And of course, the final thing to note is that it comes with the usual sexy Twisby accessories, that spanner and that silicon grease. You'll open the box and you'll stare at them either in fascination or perplexity and you will either use them on a regular and gleeful basis or they'll get chucked in a drawer. And the silicon grease is of course useful if you want to do any eyedropper conversions and things like that at any time and you haven't specifically gone out and bought a big old bucket of it. Moving on to the Lan B Cho 3059, which is 
initially most notable for the fact it comes at a approximately 10% of the price of the Twisby. Both caps and, and piston knobs are hexagonal. And in my case, the colors almost match as well. If you make the caps sort of snog each other for a minute, you'll find that they are identical in terms of their diameter. They match up beautifully. It's a bit like Lego. Curiously, Lambito have gone for a marginally taller cap. And this is somewhat accounted for by a slightly wider cap band, but not entirely. And there is nothing on the cap band. Both arch inwards slightly from the cap band and then shoot straight upwards. So the design is very, very close. Just a slight difference in length. The top finial also have the branding. In the case of the Twisby, we have our twirling, intersecting Twisby logo. In the case of the Lambito, we have the Star Trek style triangle, and that's crammed in slightly. It looks like it's almost been forced into the end of the pen, which creates a slightly unsightly impression. And if you're on the lookout for slightly unsightly impressions, and if you're in the business of peering up into the inner depths of pen caps, you'll see that You've also got the, the screw just displayed there inside the Lambito's cap, which looks a bit brutish to me. And you'll also notice that this is absent an inner cap, whereas the Twisby has an inner cap in order to keep your ink flowing better. Both clips have a chunk bitten out of them, but in terms of design, they are quite distinct. The Twisby has a very, a very straight, intent little clip that just shoots straight downwards, keeps it very simple. Whereas the Lambito, we have this very interesting ski ramp, anteater's nose style clip, which actually is quite handy if you want to quickly and painlessly clip the pen. The Twisby takes a bit more effort, especially if you're wearing something on the thicker side. The Twisby you need to lever your fingernail under the clip. The, I nearly called it the anteater. Whereas the Lambito, you can just slide it on with no trouble. It's actually a really good clip design. Although I, I imagine the shape will not appeal universally. The brand name is stamped in letters that look like they should be flashing neon on the side of the cap. And given the fact that this is such a close facsimile of the Twisby, the brand name on the cap in this bold and blunderbuss style fashion is, is, a little, is a little much. The piston knob on the Lambito is slightly shorter than the Twisby. I'm not sure how this little scrap of information is going to be helpful to you or me in assessing the caliber of these pens, but it is nonetheless there factual information about this pen. The other no difference you'll notice is the chrome band just below the piston knob on the Lambito. The Lambito piston knob is a little loose, actually secure that way. You'll hear it click into place when it is fully retracted. And I'm told just tighten it up, but I'm not absolutely convinced that that's possible. The Twisby on the other hand is very tight, very secure doesn't casually move. The last interesting point to note is about the shaft on either pen. You'll see how the ink on the Twisby beads and drops off the surface. So you get a very clear, transparent shaft, whereas you'll quickly see with the Lambito, it's much murkier. It's much more like a garden pond. It will coat the interior surface of the plastic, which is a little less attractive, makes for a less sparkling, effervescent appearance, and means that you're showcasing your ink perhaps in a slightly less kinetic and, and lovely way. And of course, showcasing your ink is half the point of demonstrator piston filler pens like this. And the coating of the ink in the Lambito perhaps points towards a slightly lower quality of plastic. This is also attested to by the fact that the Lambito, whilst being slightly longer than the Twisby, 142.9 millimeters in length capped, is in fact about a gram lighter, despite having the extra chrome furniture as well. In terms of the appearance of these two pens, there's not a great deal in it. The quality of the Twisby is clearly a lot higher. You have this clear crystal plastic and just generally everything feels tighter and neater as you would expect 
at such a vastly higher price point. The Lambito, the plastic feels and looks, if you look closely, rather cheap, but that's as you would expect at a far lower price point. So what we're gonna do next is test out the writing experience of both of these pens. You can also see I've managed to splatter ink everywhere. I have never been an elegant fountain pen filler. Here you can see the Twisby ink has filled the shaft as well. It looks a bit like a souffle when you first fill it because you've got all these air bubbles. Twisby Eco Blossom Red. Wonderful ink flow on it. We have a medium nib here and there's plenty of ink storming out of it. I've seen various people mention that they've had a slightly dry experience. That's not the case with me. Good and steady ink flow. There's a little suggestion of flex. It's a really reliable but really smooth writing experience. Lovely. Panda. Seeks. Jinxed. Zebra, four, quick, game, of, whist. Love it. Let's compare that to the Lambito 3059. This is a fine nib. The look of the nib is entirely different to the Twisbees. This is a nib that recalls the Lamy Safari, as does the rather structured triangular section. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a point of difference with the Twisby Eco, because the Twisby Eco comes in a variant with a more structured section. As triangular sections go, I don't mind this. Now, what I will say is that the model I have, nib is really good. There's a smooth, steady flow of ink. No catching, nothing like that. It comes along really well. And I've seen other, others online with somewhat less positive experiences. But as you can see, this one writes very willingly, very evenly, and it's smooth. I don't know if I've lucked out here. I think at this price point, you may well expect some variations in quality. Lovely. Panda. Seeks. Jinxed. Zebra. Four. Quick. Game. Of. Whist. So I wrote that quite quickly and the results were just great. It's a really smooth writer. There's nothing scratchy about it, the one I got anyway. Although I've had a good experience, I should point out there are lots of people who mention less positive experiences with the nib of this pen. But all I can say is that the version I have is pretty great. So in the final assessment, these pens both write very well. From a, an online scouring session, I've noticed that a lot of people have variable experiences with the Lambito. Nonetheless, I would say I have had an extraordinarily good experience with the Lambito's nib. I think it's an excellent way to introduce people to piston fillers and perhaps to slightly demystify piston fillers at an entry level price, a truly entry level price. And as such, it may have the result that new fountain pen users are engaged, interested and keen for a more reliable writing experience and may seek out higher caliber piston fillers as a result. So I don't have any cause to be negative about the performance of the Lambie Toe. I have concerns about the copying. In various other reviews, I've lamented this practice. I've also pointed out that it's a fact about the world. It exists. And what we choose to do about that in our own economic lives is an individual judgment call. So over to you. If you enjoyed watching this review, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to Panda Pen Club on YouTube. And when you click subscribe, please click the bell as well. It really helps us. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.